I apologize for my audio quality here today, folks. I don't have the right um, mic. I don't think you sound that bad, to be honest. You sound like you have a little bit of a cold. And if you said that, then people would feel a little sorry All for right. you. Yeah. So, uh, I've got a little bit of a cold this morning. and uh... <laughs> uh, That sucks. Sorry about your cold. Hello, Freedom Ducky. <laughs> All right, so so who are we? Why are we here? What are we up to? Elia, 23. Um, yeah, let's go. So we are the Crypto Basic Podcast, which you are listening to right now. is our weekly roundup of our cryptocurrency. We're going to talk about some of the big news on the subreddit, talk about some of the comments, hopefully stir up some fun conversation, debate, tangents, things of that nature. We usually like to kill a couple of minutes at the beginning because things get going usually by like 11.05 but we'll be leading in here with the first story probably in like a minute or two is that right who's who's starting us off today brent, brent will lead us off when we get there it's gonna be me <clears throat> it's gonna be me spend the full hour talking about ripple Hmm. I okay, Quasi. I promise you, I am going to talk about Ripple today. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh! Anybody else? We're taking requests. The DJ has spoken. They're taking. Hey, Brent, put that at uh, ten minutes and fifty nine or eleven minutes and fifty nine seconds in our outline. <laughs> Anybody else have any requests for DJ Brent? I actually oh. uh, XRP can be accepted as collateral on the Nexo platform now. That was an update. Ooh. There you go. Well, that's not how we're talking about it, though. We're talking about it. We're we're talking about it differently. All right, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it started. We got lots of people in here. They're clamoring for fireside chats. We got to shut that up before <laughs> before my, anybody gets too name. disappointed. All right. <clears throat> so, you know what? I need to cough. So I'm gonna cough, and then we're gonna start. <laughs> Man, I really Whoa. hope you feel better, Brett. Hey, Brent. There's a mute button on your thing. It's used for muting. All right, we're good. Uh, sorry, guys, I have a cold. All right. <laughs> so Coinbase. We're going to talk about Coinbase in a couple of different ways today. The first way we're talking about Coinbase. Did you just post that? I went to get it. Oh, yeah, you got it. All right. First way we're talking about Coinbase is it is now worth $8 billion. They just took another round of funding. It was like their Series E or some very large letter. They got $300 million, which created the $8 billion valuation. Um, they, th- this is a quote from the article that, that's showing you how Coinbase is, is valued here. This funding round, which Coinbase president and COO Asif Hirji gave the company a valuation of more than $8 billion, also featured participation from the following. Y Combinator community? Wellington Management, Andreessen Horowitz, and Polychain Capital. Some people you may or may not have heard of in that list there. Um, They say they're going to be listing hundreds of tokens sooner than later, which, you know, they're going to catch up to Binance, I guess. And they, uh, they also mentioned in the article that this round of funding was strictly for opportunistic reasons, which, like, that kind of has a negative connotation, right? If you're talking about opportunistic reasons for doing yeah, something. Yeah, it's not the way it's traditionally framed, right? That makes it sound like they're doing something. I almost something. feel like that makes it so much looser that, they, that they're that they so comfortable that, yeah, they are literally like, they are they have nothing to hide. It's like, yeah, we're seeking opportunities because we're so far ahead and we're hitting all these goals and we're growing at a rate that we never expected. Yeah, like, look, we're going to add a stretch goal here. As a quick side note, guys, so as you know, I have a super uh, computer connected to the interweb, so I ran the math, and $300 million initial investment, you said, right, Brent? Uh, it, it, so, was a ra- it was a funding round, yeah. Yeah, so at an $8 billion valuation, those people already made 26 times their money. <laughs> no, no, Sounds no. like a good investment. No, no, they, they, they bought, like, whatever percentage of the company is equivalent to that percentage of 8 billion. That's not, this wasn't their opening round. No, no, no. This just happened like two days ago. No, Coinbase isn't launching. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, no. I thought that 300 million was Coinbase's valuation when they launched. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah, Gotcha. gotcha. Nope. It's just a new, new investment round. So, uh, as we, as we do, we like to talk about our favorite comments in the Reddit thread. Here's mine. Uh, (laughs) hundreds of tokens will be added, except ripple smiley. (laughs) Yeah. I told you we were going to talk about Ripple. 
No, here. Oh, Brent, how how come they won't add Ripple? I thought Ripple was like the next one to be added any nope. second now Kareem, because it's totally not in the terms and conditions. You're wrong. Uh, so here's one thing that I said. We we have gone over this a million times. How in their terms and conditions they say that they need the company to be decentralized completely to to add it to their to their platform, which is why we've always said that Ripple will not be added, and we've also said that we would see some serious signaling if they ever intended to add Ripple. They would change their terms and conditions, or something else would happen. And they did, didn't they? No. Well, I don't know if I didn't look into whether they changed their terms and condition, but they added basic attention token. So basic attention token was the other big story about Coinbase. They added that a few days ago. It's open for deposit. It's not quite open for trading yet. But basic attention token in its current state is completely centralized. So they have added as their newest like foray into the coins, they've added a centralized asset. Now, I understand that basic attention token has routes to become decentralized. And I'm hoping that Coinbase is a part of that plan because right now they use a really shitty exchange called Uphold and you're required to use Uphold if you want to participate in the basic attention token side as a content creator. But, um, you know, you can buy it on like Binance or whatever the case if you just want to have basic attention token. But if you want to participate in the ecosystem and you want your YouTube or your website or anything like that to be part of it, you need to be a part of Uphold. And also... The Brave Ledger, not so much the uh, the ERC20 version, the Brave Ledger itself is centralized. Now, I love the the Brave browser, and the basic attention token has a lot of potential. I'm happy that Coinbase added it. It's one of it's one of the projects that, even though it's centralized, I'm happy with what they're trying to accomplish. But all that being said, I believe this is the signal that we're looking for that Ripple is on the table. So I think that Crypto Addict is wrong. They will probably be adding Ripple sooner than later. Uh, Brent, as a quick side note, you've been pushing very heavily for me to use Brave. And I think I finally finished all the processes and started using it as much as I could. And it is clean. It's fast. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, it's got a couple it, of clunks. It, it, like there's a couple things that will happen. And you're like, damn it, you have to open up Firefox. But I've, I've completely taken uh, Chrome off my computer. So. Um, yeah, actually, <clears throat> later in the episode, I, I had planned on touching on this. I, I didn't notice this part on your your outline earlier, but it, the one thing that came to mind to me was, you know, as much as I am a fan of basic attention token, to me, this is also the signal that being listed on Coinbase is no longer <clears throat> relevant, right? Like, yeah, I. It's not. It's not like newsworthy anymore. It's it's going to be for the first couple of coins, but. Uh, I, I think like, you know, the basic attention token is one of those ones that they said they were going to take a look at. Uh, so we can see Cardano coming soon, that kind of thing. But we're not looking at like giant market pumps every time something gets listed on Coinbase anymore. I mean, that, that it's kind of well, I mean, on well, Binance. I mean, we don't talk about price. I have no idea what's going on with that. I, I, I only look at the, the coins themselves. But honestly, like, I, I guess to me, like, the, whatever the the increase or decrease may be, to me, this also just says that, like, now Coinbase, they've said that they're going to be adding a lot of stuff for a long time, and we've suspected it, but now we're actually seeing it in place. And I think that now it's just they're going to start becoming, you know, also a large broker. Yeah, but yeah, more I importantly, mean, following U.S. regulations. Yeah, and they're still a respected name, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as they don't go all out and just start putting in a bunch of trash. Because, like, in this case, I mean, yeah, it's not decentralized, but, uh, Brett, you know, you know more about the project, but it's a project you vouch for, right? So just because they've gone beyond just decentralization doesn't mean that they've gone full on nothing matters, you know? Right, right, exactly. That's why, and we've said a lot of times, Ripple's not a scam. They're just not decentralized. So, so the it, there's nothing. It's okay to well, add Ripple to the platform. Even so far as to say that they're not a crypto. Yeah, well, th they don't have the ideals that cryptocurrency has because of what they're trying to do. Uh, which, it, which, for the most part, I agree with. With the way I understand them, anyway. So, yeah, I, not a crypto is dumb because obviously they use um, they use cryptographic proofs and technology but the the idea and more importantly, of... <clears throat> sorry real quick brand it's also kind of a form of reverse like not really reverse 
we would essentially be gatekeeping there because just because the three of us have certain ideals that we associate with cryptocurrency doesn't mean that any project that tries to uh, you know take this step uh, this space further in a particular direction that they have to subscribe to our ideals of cryptocurrency. So you know we wouldn't really want anybody else with most things to determine. Uh, this is what is and isn't. So we also have to like resist the urge to do that ourselves. Uh, yeah, kind of. But I mean, I have my, you know, I have my ideas of what, and I think what Bitcoin is is kind of what cryptocurrency is, right? Like, like there, there are yeah. there are things that are antithetical to that, like like Ripple, and then there's there are things that are similar. So I don't know, but um, it is a cryptocurrency. It's just not our particular preference to the to the way it works. <clears throat> right, right. But that's, I guess that's the point of emphasis, you know, like we've talked about this before and actually this leads into a little bit the next topic because just for fun, we were going to talk about mm. some of these, there was a post about the random predictions for Bitcoin and we just recently celebrated the 10 year anniversary. Um, I am as bullish on Bitcoin as any of us here on the, uh, um, and I like the project a lot, but it's still a massive space, right? Like if we believe that cryptocurrencies are bringing along new methods of distribution, new methods of storage, new store, new methods of payment, new methods of data uh, storage and, and transfer, blah, blah, blah. If it's so many new things, then we should expect huge portions of this sector to develop in ways that have nothing to do with the values that we associate with Bitcoin. So, um, you know, it's awesome to love Bitcoin and for a lot of the space to try to follow that vision. But I think we should also be always inviting of which other directions uh, the space can go, you know. Uh, but anyway, here are the links. Well, before we go into this, some of these predictions, which obviously <laughs> is just kind of ridiculousness because nobody knows the future. But um, before we move on to that, anything you guys want to say or any disagreement there? No, we can we can move on to the next portion of our price talk. In the next portion of our price talk, that's right. So this is more fun, guys, because for anybody listening, uh, we always harp on the fact that nobody can predict the price, that we have really no idea what's going on. But this was one of the posts that was circulating this week, and it's basically 11 famous uh, people like the Wink of Wass, uh, John McAfee, there's Joseph Stiglitz there, The Economist, Jim Cramer, the guy on NBC – and it just shows how wildly divergent all of their views of Bitcoin is. And part of the reason I wanted to share this and kind of stimulate a little discussion is for anybody looking like Bitcoin is going to be somewhere in this range, right? Like even if you pick a random spot, if you pick a random year and a random uh, point in this line, one of these people is going to be randomly pretty close. And now all of a sudden they just become this expert guru because they randomly ended up close to a random distribution that nobody could predict so i <laughs> this is kind of an opportunity to bash on the on the predictors um and my favorite comment by far is because it's so true uh this person wrote john mcafee a man who squandered his fortune with a shitty antivirus product and jim kramer the biggest shiller in investment history <clears throat> in investment today have the biggest hopes for Bitcoin. Mm. Fuck, that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, you guys see the numbers here, right? They're all yeah. over the place. The the Tim Draper one confused me a little bit. He's actually over by Winklevoss. All oh, right, yeah, and James Loop, and yeah, all those are I think clumped into that. Oh, okay. Those three are in there. Oh, see, mm -hmm. what's interesting is like where those three are is kind of where I'd think I'd want to be. And why is there nobody in there? In the oh, oh, like where their actual floating nobody's hands is? under a hundred k to a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. And they're like after twenty twenty two, Bitcoin is either a million dollars or zero dollars. That's yeah, it. Yeah, like, <laughs> like what? How about anything else? Where it's like it's ten x or it's like whatever, like fifteen x now or like one one hundredth of what it is now i would have yeah, lost also, a huge bet on jim kramer being that high oh yeah i would have never i i didn't i haven't heard anything positive from him i mean memory. he's like all about shilling like they said you know just no but not about crypto and like it th this seems counterintuitive to like being a stock market well it's not like i watched yeah, but kramer but he's... <clears throat> yeah go ahead brent yeah, it's like i watched kramer but he's like 
Like, I, I wouldn't have pictured him as free. Maybe, like he said one time on his show, Bitcoin's going to be a million dollars. Bye, bye, bye. And then he, like, kicked over a table and, like, some fucking doves flew out of it. And there he had uh, he had his Bitcoin prediction and that was it. I don't know, but I feel like we would see it in the subreddit every time he said something good about crypto. Like, people would be like, oh, Kramer said good Listen, things. Listen, here, here's how I would reframe um, Jim Kramer. Look, you do have people that are kind of anti-crypto, but they're anti-crypto, let's say, for like a solid philosophical base. Like, let's say like Peter Schiff, right? He's all about gold and silver, and he doesn't really see crypto as having a chance. And you could expect some consistency there. For me, somebody like Kramer, without being too harsh, like his job is just to be an entertainer. He's all about the times. He's kind of known as a shill. He's just keeping up with the headlines, keeping up with what's popular. His job is to get clicks and views, and that's it. So it's not surprising to me at all that he, he could have been anti-Bitcoin at one point, and then once it gets popular or cool or trendy or headliney, you just get one of the guys that's like, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's going to be a million dollars. I'll say whatever because I'll say whatever about whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. just being real. He's like the John McAfee of the real world. <laughs> <laughs> That was impressive. Uh, do you guys like, are you familiar with most of the other people on this list uh, other than Winklevoss and the top two? Um, uh, well, Joseph Stiglitz is a pretty renowned um, economist. Uh, I don't know who Kenneth Rogoff was, but it looks like, oh, looks like both people with an economics degree expect zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an American, and then yeah, Amer the people, okay, look. The engineers? And Max Kaiser, who have like the bullish outlook, are American television personality and American broadcaster. <laughs> and the ones that are claiming zero are American economists. So, hey, at least we know we're with the broadcasters, guys. Well, yep. the, the Max Kaiser <laughs> has 100K in like 2030. That's like probably my, my favorite prediction out of all of these. Or... or or the most accurate in my opinion like if i, I think agree. one of these is my best chance to be true that's probably it yeah and it has the most reasonable slope i mean look at the winkle boss and the McCaffrey. <laughs> you know you know what actually you all know right. when i lost i think i told you guys this but when i lost all interest in McAfee, it was so he came out and he was like oh i think bitcoin's gonna be i think he said like 500k and then he gave a long horizon he said something like by 2020 yeah i think it was 2020 right and then the price went up like a month later, the price of Bitcoin surged by like 12% or 15% or something, whatever. And then he just changed his prediction and he's like, nope, nope, nope. It's going to be a million dollars by 2020. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? So a 10% fluctuation in a volatile asset in a week changes your five-year event horizon 100%. Wow. Okay. So your shit's literally based on nothing. Like complete whatever I'm feeling, you know. I, I ate my Wheaties for breakfast, so Bitcoin's going to be a trillion dollars. Right. <laughs> there is no way John McAfee eats Wheaties for breakfast. He would have some sort of like long story about how there's surveillance chips inside of the Wheaties. And you can't eat <laughs> anything like that from the government, and then he's going to yeah, be assassinated yeah. by the Wheaties. Too many, too many contracts with the Olympians who are all secret spies from the right. <laughs> I was listening to him talk about how he had an assassination attempt on him. And he was like, I was clearly poisoned. But, like, the story was he was doing a bunch of drugs, and then he woke up in the hospital. So it was like, uh, <laughs> I don't think you were poisoned, bro. I'm pretty you sure. understand, Brent. They snuck PCP in his heroin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't expecting that shit. <laughs> They'll come at you from any angle. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So... Um, you guys want to, do we want to move on to Tether? We want to touch any more angles here. Any questions on the audience? Maybe we should take questions as we go instead of all at the end. Anybody Ooh. have anything to say about this chart? And, uh, and can no anyone do a technical analysis on that real quick? Tell us where the, uh, reverse yeah. Bart Simpsons are. Or... Oh yeah. You look what, at, you know what trading word tilts me the most? It's like a dead cat's bounce. Have you guys heard that one? Or is it's something very similar to that. Yeah, dead every time cat. I hear it, it, it tilts me. You don't know about the oh. dead cat, bro? No, I don't know. I about think that's the what it's called. <laughs> I just you know, know about the can. I, I just know about the candlesticks, yo. Look, Elliot, we don't like John Baby McAfee Gators. either, but we completely get that he is a very entertaining individual to, to interact with. 
Yeah. I, I also, this I is a pretty – okay, I have a prediction. You guys ready for this? I'm going to go out on a limb here, uh, but hear me now. Quote me later. John McAfee will not eat his penis on light television. Boom. Oh, prediction. man, that wow. could be a prediction that the price goes up, or it can be a prediction that he doesn't eat his penis. Yeah, I, I'm covering my bases, but I'm going to call his bluff. I am – let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are talking to professional poker players with an expertise in human psychology. <laughs> I don't see it happening. I also feel like the FCC would step in. Somebody would step in to prevent this. But anyway, continue. With story. Is that like <laughs> if somebody's about to jump off a bridge, like the police show up and they're just like, don't do it. Don't, yeah, don't cut absolutely. off your neck. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's going to be like, no, no, no. I need you to chill in ICO first. <laughs> <laughs> of all the ICOs that are coming. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're on the same page, Crypto. All right. This this is one of the the story. This is not like super news. This just came out, but I wanted to talk about <clears throat> the the tether, uh, the new tether. We have the money. Um. So tether has set has changed its banking partner. They are now banking with a bank called Deltec Bank. And Deltec, uh, we're not going to go into who they are yet, but Deltec said they have all the money. They said we have one point eight billion dollars in assets, um, and in fact, they they said they had all the money in this letter right here that I'm going to take a little. I'm going to post. Bam! This letter says, "Hey, all the money sitting here in our bank." It's a very long, very drawn out, specific letter. With a very elaborate signature, uh, if the, <laughs> which is not actually the case. If you're clicking on it right now, you're going to look at it and be like, "Wait, what is he talking about?" The the signature on this is the funniest part of the letter to me. Now, it has nothing to do with whether it's true or not, but whoever wrote this didn't even have the time to like put like a cool, you know, like Donald Trump like signature where it's like super elaborate. They literally just scribbled a circle on there and passed it off, and they're like, all right, next. So and this could just be their legitimate signature, but it added to the comedy of the tragedy or the comedy, depending on how you look at it, of Tether. Um, you know what? People were saying this is actually not that, you know, it's not like we can just make fun of this. This is a bank legitimately saying something that because they put this out, they could technically be sued for this if it's not true. Um, they are, a, they're, you know, they're a real bank and everything like that, but, but they are kind of, uh, not in the greatest of jurisdictions. So here's my favorite comment. The Republic of China? Uh, no. So this person posts Deltec Bank, they quote it, and then they post a link that you can't click on because I screenshotted that. So just take, <laughs> I've got the link, it's coming. Uh, so... So take a look there, and ah, Las Bahamas. So, if you look at the image here that the person posted, the autocomplete on Google for Deltec Bank is their full name, Deltec Bank and Trust. The second one is Deltec Bank CEO, and the third one is Deltec Bank Money Laundering. Well, but it gets better. Then after money laundering is Tether. <laughs> and cryptocurrency, and then uh, Venezuela and, is on and here. Bahamas too. careers. I mean, how do you miss that? Yeah, but yeah. Wait. Okay, so I have two questions here, just for context. Number one, do we have any evidence that a financial institution would engage in, uh, you know, financial crimes? And two, aren't the Bahamas known for being a pretty tough regulatory body in international <laughs> finance? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, SGP, I did this too. So I thought this was somebody just being funny with autocomplete, so I opened up an incognito window and actually went and did this myself. This was at least that day before – I'm sure crypto is in the uh, autocomplete now because so many people have looked it up because of that. But at the time, this was accurate. This was extremely accurate, and this is how it worked. So uh, it is – you know, I didn't even look into what their money laundering situation was, but yes – Kareem was being ironic there. <laughs> These banks are obviously willing to do shady things. They are also uh, known to be doing shady things in the Bahamas. Um, look, 
th- this is a non-zero amount of good for Tether. Like, it is, like, when, when I say non-zero, that's a, that's a term we throw around a lot in poker, which means it's not absolute zero, but it's such a small number that you don't want to say, like, 1%. So, uh, so... Yeah, non-zero. I, actually, I guess it's not poker. It's probably statistics in general. But uh, just a little, uh, you know, a little check-in. Tether today is about a dollar. It wasn't the last couple days. I don't know. Every now and then we see it go down to like ninety-six cents. Um, hmm. Today it's at ninety-nine cents, so it's really doing. It's really doing well. Uh, <laughs> All right. So I got I got two thoughts on this here. I want to be fair on the little bit, and then on the other side, I want to be critical. Right. Here's where I'm going to be fair to Tether. We are actually quite comfortable with a lot of uh, cryptocurrency institutions having their headquarters and their banks and all that stuff in uh, dubious jurisdictions because we understand that traditional jurisdictions tend to be difficult for cryptocurrency, right? So like if Binance or somebody like that, uh, you know, has a bank in whatever country, we literally don't care. So I'll recognize that before I continue. The problem with Tether, though, is that I keep going back. Uh, it reminds me of that video where Vitalik is destroying why Craig Wright is not Satoshi. And the main point that he said, he said it was something along the lines of, in signaling theory, if somebody has an easy way to prove something and they keep taking complicated and convoluted and extracted ways to try to prove something, when they could prove it in a much simpler way, if they had the proof or evidence, then st- then you can conclude that they don't. And in the case of Craig Wright, it was he could have proved it using private keys and instead he tried to play it off with public information. So the conclusion there would be that he doesn't have it. And now with Tether, they've done all this stuff. It's like, oh yeah, we have the money. All the money's right here. Here, we're gonna get an auditor. Uh, wait, never mind. That auditor, we had a problem with him. Wait, he's fired. Wait, he's, now, he's, now here's a letter from another bank. And look, it says right here, uh, Tether has all the monies. Smiley face, semi-signature. Like, okay, bro. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not going to trust this, unfortunately. They they had opportunities to prove it. They've been shady all along. Once somebody has proven to me that they're shady, I'm skeptical of everything they do to a higher degree. Yep. Still, still 100% on board with avoiding tether scared as to what it means when it does go down i don't know how that's going to work i see it maybe getting enough of its like maybe enough happened that it was able to crawl out of this hole and it's kind of okay but we still don't have an audit so like we we know that it's not so when to me that that last part you just said is is probably the most likely scenario and i think that no matter what the situation was leading up to this i think um <sighs> This most likely will buy them enough time to likely cover their tracks or do whatever they need to do to, you know, make up this money. I, I'm I'm imagining um, that this it, it it gets extended a decent amount of time, is my opinion, before any potential blowups may happen. Maybe the, here's the thing: they're not they're they're not going to be the the stable coin of the U.S. dollar for very much longer. There are so many better options out there from strictly centralized better options that have better um, auditing procedures to decentralized options like the DAI that well, are Well, now that a real company better. stepped in and, and is offering a, a relevant one to the U.S. market, then, yeah, I think Tether is no longer going to be relevant. Yeah, it's going to be slow, but... I also would like to point out that, and I'm not sure what the internal things that are actually happening, but it's also possible that that very loss of market is going to make it even more difficult for them to try to make up whatever hole they created, you know? Uh, so who knows? Like, I, I still personally expect Tether to have a not happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I this is not like it. our, this is not our prediction of cryptocurrency or of Bitcoin being at, you know, a million dollars. This is, this is one of those that when this happens, we're, I'm going to, tweet out every single episode that we hit all 30 of them where we tried to stop people from getting into tether and, and just hashtag that. told you so and i well, i am you might not but <laughs> <I'm getting it. laughs> yeah know. at the end of the day people's it's still people's money and like i don't see any reason to run people's notes in it after the fact like it's it's our job to warn them beforehand in my opinion yeah you're I, you're right we shouldn't 
<laughs> but I've never been able to control you for as long <laughs> that, as I've That been doesn't here. mean I'm not going to, but you were correct. That is mean to do that. Anyway, that was the that was the tether story. That's it. I want to hear uh, about crazy shit in the desert. Kareem, what you got? Yeah, crypto utopia in Nevada, guys. So here's the story. This was the original story that was posted on Reddit, but it didn't have a link. The title of this story was, uh, if you click on it, it just says, Consumer Protection Lawyer Jeffrey Burns is planning on building... Wait, hold on a second. I needed to load up. I started reading, but it hadn't fully loaded up. I overestimated. There you go. Consumer Protection Lawyer Jeffrey Burns is the owner and CEO of Blockchains LLC, a company that bought more than 67,000 acres of land in northern Nevada and is planning to in, create a crypto city in the desert. And it says that he's invested $300 million. But there was no link, guys. No link provided. It was just information. No However, way. You're telling me that everybody upvoted a post that had no proof? Yes. Wow. But what an aberration. Here's what, you haven't, here's what you haven't taken into account. Look how boss this picture looks. Huh? That's pretty cool. And that's what people were looking at. Let's be real, because we're all just looking at pretty pictures. So this is the I'm pretty sure that's just city center. Well, no, this is the uh, this is an artist rendering. More news, most news and RCC has no real evidence. Rob, you are right. But here's the thing. Right now, this is the crypto basic zone. So evidence comes left and right. We went to go find an article and guess what we Kareem, found? I actually yeah. need I need to stop you for a second and I'm going to I'm going to give a little foreshadowing. I also Go find it up and go find an article off of the subreddit later in the episode. But uh, I can see my results end up being significantly different than yours. So, oh, go inter ahead. Interesting, interesting foreshadowing. I always like it. All right. So, here's the story that we did find to get more information on whether or not this story was true. There we have some evidence. New York Times has a story titled Cryptocurrency Millionaire Wants to Build a Utopia in Nevada. That's a good start. The, here's how the story does start with this big purchase of land, and it creates like a mystery for everybody around there because this company that nobody had heard of comes in and pays $170 million cash for this massive plot of land. And then it cuts straight to uh, Jeffrey Burns, and here's a quote from the article. That's some quote. super villain stuff, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's getting excited. We're going to get into it a little more. Um, so he imagines a sort of experimental community spread over about a hundred square miles where houses, schools, commercial districts, and production studios will be built. The centerpiece of this giant project will be the blockchain. Now, then the New York Times article spends about uh, half an article explaining to the reader what the blockchain is and what so they Bitcoin do a great is. job. Uh, whatever, nothing we need to go over here. But this guy's vision involves Ethereum. It becomes a central part, really. And he picked Nevada, he admitted, because of the tax benefits. And for example, in Nevada, there is no income tax, kind of like we have in Florida, state income tax. So that's a big advantage. He's actually, this land has been chosen by other big companies. So he's close to the Tesla Gigafactory. And also Google, Apple, and Switch have uh, land near where this is going to be. Uh, check it out. He actually got rich. Um, well, listen to this quote. Mr. Burns bought Ether, the digital token associated with Ethereum, in a big sale in 2015. Thanks Ooh. to an astronomical increase in the price of Ether and some well-timed selling last year before it crashed, he became wealthy enough to fund his dream project. So this guy is living the dream, guys. He got rich crypto now wants to build a crypto city uh here's some more details about what he envisions it's gonna be is he our elon musk well we'll see we'll see he's putting in he says that they've put in 300 million dollars that money has gone into the land offices planning and they currently have a staff of 70 people he promises to give away all of the decision making for the city which will be governed using a blockchain ethereum based governance system and to give away 90% of the dividends, although it didn't go into more detail. So my guess is that this will be some kind of proof of stake environment 
where he keeps 10% in perpetuity. Uh, I don't know the details, whatever. I mean, he's allowed to make money off of this if it takes off. Um, but anyway, uh, that's more or less the sum of it, guys. So yeah, he's he's really doing this. He's really putting a bunch of money into this land, plot of land in the desert to try to create a mini crypto utopia, crypto-based city where votes are done on the blockchain and everybody has a wallet address that's used for whatever, voting, records, all that kind of stuff. So this is another one of those examples of one of the biggest fringe benefits of cryptocurrency, in my opinion, which is that some really smart people who have some really cool ideas are getting enough money to do them without having to, like, sell out to an investor or bring on a bunch of people that are going to tear their project in different directions. Basically, exactly what happened with Elon Musk, which is he struck it rich with PayPal and was able to start yeah. going on his actual passion projects. So um, it's exciting to see this kind of stuff. And and really, it's the same thing with um, not, not to show specific projects, but even what Charles Hoskinson is doing is pretty similar, right? Like they made a lot of money off of Ethereum. Um, they, he went off, funded IOHK with his co-founder, and they just built blockchains and stuff like that. And who knows what Itali uh, Vitalik is going to do with his wealth. So I, I agree with you 100%, man. It's cool to have like these new pockets of wealth that are willing to invest it in a creative and unique way that helps this space grow. So a couple things here. Um, number one, I can't think of a better name to be the hero of millennials for a rich guy than Mr. Burns. Um, I, think that, I think that's perfect for starters. Um, Bring back a poo. <laughs> uh, then, uh, so as far as the the Nevada no income tax from Quasi here, uh, I believe that's the state income tax. Yeah, right? it's state it's income tax. Not Florida. Just like Florida. <clears throat> okay. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of with this, uh, I mean, if it's in Nevada, they're going to need a casino, right? Oh boy. <laughs> we have some close by. We, we know some I, guys I, who might be able Nevada's to run that. a little bigger than you think, Cream. I bet it's not that close by. Huh. Blockchain well, casino. Las Vegas is, is on the literal, like the most Southern Eastern point of Nevada. And if this is in Northern Nevada, it's probably... God, who knows a eight hour drive maybe well no not that it's much. it is like six hours from six vegas hour, to reno yeah. i think it's, it's very and far. reno's not even in northern well it's it's in like central northern right uh yeah kind of whatever either case this is really 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 interesting unfortunately the games are gonna suck if it's poker quasi if, if we get poker in there and all the people Dude, who know about crypto I don't know, man like like there's a lot of rich guys in san francisco that you know because they could play really big stakes by accident hey listen listen only like six or seven uh out of nine players will be pros the other three will be web developers it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and blockchain developers <laughs> it sounds like a fine game <laughs> uh yeah this was very exciting uh i was very excited about this because i also i found this the same thread that had no info and then got frustrated and kind of had to table, you know, some of the other things that I was doing because it, it wasn't enough info. I was going to include it in here because I wanted your guys' opinion on it. Um, but I actually decided to go a different route. So I'm actually going to go a little bit into a little bit of nonsense for now. I kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that I found. Um, so out of curiosity, guys, like, what is your process when you go and search for the articles on, on this? So just so I can get an idea of what your guys' flow is like, do you search by top comments or? When we, when we're finding like the articles for the show. Yeah. Like when you're on Reddit and you're, and you're participating in this community and like you're, you're interacting. I, and... I sort for, from top of the week. I haven't been commenting a lot. I just commented the other day on the tether thing. I put like, you know, I, I, I put, uh, you know, dear tether users, uh, Tether had uh, all the money on Halloween signed a line too lazy to be squiggly, and I got downvoted. But I noticed I had a crypto god uh, flare on my name, so thanks whoever put that on there. 
I just wanted to... <laughs> anyway, yeah, we sort by top of the week, and then we find, like, the biggest stories of the week. And if there's not... If the information isn't complete, ideally they have cited sources in the article, but a lot of these sources are shit, so they don't. So then you have to go do an actual yeah. Google search to try and find the sources that these people are not citing. Yeah, basically, with this one... A similar process for me, you know, I'll try sorting different things to, to get different stories. But yeah, open up a story. I go usually to the first three to four comments and just glaze over them real quick. If they're jokes or weighty stuff, I know I can keep going. But usually if there's like a major, major flaw in the article or source or whatever, somebody's kind of waving a flag. So you can go into the reading of the actual article with that kind of flag that's been waved by somebody in the community. And then like in this case, there was no link. It was just a text. So then I just Googled the name of the guy, Nevada cryptocurrency, and wanted to see the articles that came out and then just picked one of the biggest, you know, obviously New York Times. Or Sometimes I try to pick something that's not crypto related to see what the mainstream opinion is. Because like if you go to a cryptocurrency news site, oftentimes they're just kind of like a, a little bubble that all copied each other's story and it's like identical. But the, the more traditional institutions will go into more depth. They'll, they'll say it in their own words. So in the earlier, uh, or one of the top posts of the week was about Bitcoin's birthday, and the top post had basically no content. It was just it was just a picture or whatever. So then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go on to Medium and I'm gonna try to find an article uh, on Medium. And then my goal was I wanted to do a little outline for us, and then I was gonna post the article onto the subreddit with my notes. I thought this was a great idea, right? I I didn't see like I wanted to be the solution to the problem, right? So I find on Medium they have on the main page there's this thing called Popular on Medium. Now I am new to Medium; I don't use it that much, but I notice m most of the higher end quality crypto content that I find tends to be on there. So I thought that'd be a great place to start. So here is an example of what a similar thing looked like yesterday. Um, it looks a little bit different today. So it has popular on medium. One of the articles was titled as a major milestone hits Bitcoin. What happens now? I was like, great. This has to be a great place to start. Right. <laughs> and I don't know much about Hacker Moon, but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, I don't really recommend their content. Noon. noon. Hacker I Noon, I'm sorry. It does look like an M, though. Uh, honestly, I I started trying to read it. it. It was long. There were a bunch of – there are a bunch of charts. I was like, man, this should be a great place to start. This should have some topics. There should be some good conversation here. But it ended up just being an entire article on trading and price and a lot of the things that we are not really a big fan of. So I got a little frustrated. I'd spent some time on this kind of like reading it, but you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't the right article for this situation. So I decided to kind of like give up and I was going to kind of move on until you get to the bottom of that article where it says it, that none of this is financial advice. And honestly, like, I have a huge problem with that because we feel obligated to say that on almost all of these shows, including this one. But you know what we do? We just don't talk about the financial stuff. We don't give financial advice. That's why we say we don't give financial <laughs> advice. There is literally countless examples of financial advice in here. Like, it's literally embarrassing that this person decided to add this thing. Bye, bye, bye. Now, financial advice. <laughs> I, I mean, like... And, and so I kind of wanted to be a frustrated with the community a little bit because yeah, like we, this is annoying. We shouldn't have to deal with this, but I'm understanding more why this is a problem for the community as a whole. And it's not just some bad apples. It's the fact that there's so much bad content out there that it's really overwhelming sometimes. Okay. So I do have a couple of opinions on this. Number one is we can't really compare that. That's one of the first things is we have to distinguish mentally between opinion pieces and journalistic work. Journalistic work is ha, involves X amount of legwork with a particular type of process that is focused on sources and making an attempt at objectivity. If you go to Hacker Noon or if you go to Medium or whatever, they are not 
a traditional journalistic thing. It's a place, it's a blog place where you have hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of contributors and authors. So it becomes very difficult. You have probably fantastic, super value added content, and you probably have trash, right? The problem is what really is dictating how a lot of these things move is titles and our own impulses to upvote things that just confirm things we want to hear and not really follow through with sources or whatever. Um, so it's just difficult to, to compare, you know? So yeah, there is a lot of, there is a lot of quote unquote, not valuable information. Um, but at the same time, the moment that we see, oh, it's a blog, it's a uh, whatever, it's just a medium article, then it's an opinion piece and, and we shouldn't take it too seriously. And then we should strive for if it comes to like factual stuff, go more for um, journalistic uh, institutions that are at least trying to give information, you know? I'll give you a quote that uh, made me realize how much I'd wasted my time. <laughs> his, exact, his exact quote from this article was, if you decided to hodl like all these other amateurs on Twitter, you're and you're staring at an unrealized loss of 61%. What what do you suppose your feelings towards crypto are by now? Are you buying more, averaging your cost basis down? Most likely not. You're probably cursing the friend who told you to open a Coinbase account and wondering how they will ever make your money back. And you're definitely telling anyone who will listen to your rants that they should stay away too. End quote. But this is not financial advice. Wow. <laughs> harrowing stuff there amazing stuff very very so fact-based anecdote uh, yes cream i completely agree i i did choose a bad starting location i trusted a place that because i do read the occasional good source doesn't mean the the site itself was going to provide the good sources so i failed you guys today and I <laughs> now and look and we should always remember man like opinion like if if it's open submission um anybody can contribute and have whatever they want right at least but like when i say at least uh let's say the time magazine or new york times or something like that they have editors they have some type of standards that doesn't mean that they don't have biases though as we've often discussed that doesn't mean that they don't have headline writers who are more interested in getting our attention than the content that doesn't mean that they don't have an editorial board whose bias is created by the company that owns the institution itself um, and we've seen all kinds of examples of that, right? So I think that our job really is to develop those skills to not only be able to differentiate between uh, value added information that actually has journalistic work, but then on top of that, we have to be mindful of the specific bias uh, that we might be experiencing. And to the larger point, that is the experience that we're all going through, right? Like we want to be three regular guys that are learning about crypto and sharing that experiences with the listeners. I mean, you know, I'm hoping that that was like a really interesting and valuable, you know, part of the research process. And right. hopefully somebody is improving their own research process from my mistake. <laughs> well, well, fuck you said, I read a comment on Reddit that said, I hope everyone in, our, in cryptocurrency loses everything. Uh, yep. I mean, I've seen that a million times on Reddit. There are a lot of people hoping that. All all of my uh, friends in the financial world all think the same thing, too. I don't know what licked means. from. So far, they're right. Yeah. yeah the, like I mean, so far this year. Like, I, like I know, lifetime, I'm they're not right. Man. But uh, Elliot posted a, an article that was talking about the cost of mining Bitcoin is more than twice something. I didn't actually read the article. But um, the it says energy cost of mining. My guess is it meant to say electricity. Electricity is high, but I don't think the energy is is that high. So I'd have to look into that. But um, there are also some cool mining facilities that are trying to use like the heat energy that they end up creating rather than just dispersing it to do something like help them grow things hydroponically and that kind of stuff. So um, I there is definitely an environmental concern on proof of work. It is, yeah. uh, it's not global warming <laughs> level or anything like that. So uh, if environmentalists might want to focus somewhere else before they start worrying about people's mind breaks. So real quick, just going back to that, uh, the Guardian, right? At least they're giving you statistics and numbers. But one of the things like right off the bat, mining for cryptocurrencies, when we click on that article that you, post that you posted, it says mining for cryptocurrencies requires more energy per dollar generated than mining copper, platinum, or gold. 
Okay, so this is as much a commentary on the current valuation of Bitcoin, dollar, copper, gold, and platinum as it is on the energy required because they're, they're estimating the cost based precisely on the value. You know what I'm saying? And there are multiple ways in which the, in which the space is developing away from pure proof of work. Like everybody knows that from proof of stake to more efficient versions of proof of work. Uh, we also have more efficient energy being developed. Like I, I a hundred percent agree that this is something that cryptocurrency has to improve, but it's not like, it's not an existential threat to cryptocurrency. It's an existential threat to crypto, uh, to proof of work at most. Yeah. So a, a black hole son, uh, put a comment here in the, in the chat. It said, my dad's financial advisor just a couple days ago. And that, and he mentions that his dad holds XLM at his recommendations that crypto was used in its entirety to launder drug money. And it's a scam. I mean, so my question to your dad is, does he ask your financial advisors what their biases are with this type of information? Uh, yeah, this is, they're telling him that it's a scam while they're telling him to put some more money in mutual funds. Like financial advisors are so biased and they don't know they are. I mean, they've been trained a certain way. They think they're doing the right thing and they, I guess they are versus keeping your money in dollars, but financial. I don't think they're doing the right thing. Some of them are pretty directly being off to sign up their clients for shit investment products and they know it and they talk about it and it was shown during the crisis. Just sorry, just want to make it clear, like, yes, some of them do think they're doing their job, and a lot of people in that industry are perfectly comfortable fucking over the consumer because they make a ton of money. Continue. That Nope, that's it. Just be very wary. <laughs> we, we are not financial advisors, nor will we probably ever be financial advisors because that is a path where we are, if you want to go down that, you're intentionally giving people bad advice. So... We are not financial advisors is a badge of honor versus a, uh, you know, a detriment or a versus a obligation and not, like a bad thing about what we're saying. I can't think of the right word. I am certainly not a linguist. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a disclaimer. It's a badge. of. Yes, that exactly. That is exactly what I was trying to say, but failed. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Hey, listen, we're all coming up on the end of the hour got any questions or anything they want to bring up or um brent did you want to mention this ugandans thing that we skipped uh well i mean we can go back this was just a real quick uh uh we don't really yeah whatever I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do this we'll do it and we'll also address any to, sorry any questions well i thought we were getting towards the end there and uh there we go we got right, uh questions are fine too there's there's 40 million mm. ugandans that signed up for binance in its first week of being available in Uganda, which uh, is is great, and also hopefully they just don't become like crypto traders and thinking that there is uh, some sort of issue there. Um, and this was my favorite comment where they were saying uh, they just told the story like this isn't even funny. I recall years ago working in a poor sub-Saharan co country on a contract. I was paid in cash and terrified as I carried a backpack stuffed with 30 kilos of local currency to a money changer, and the money changer took a 10% fee, too. Uh, so that's what that's what some of these countries are dealing with. So it's really awesome to see any adoption there. 74% uh, of Ugandans are unbanked. or Well, 74% of Ugandan households are unbanked. So mm. that is a massive number, and banking the unbanked is a is one of the core values i think of cryptocurrency so it was cool to see this happening uh, yeah i agree brent and it reminds me also of when, when we did that thing with venezuela where somebody talked about how when venezuelans try to leave the country they actually have the military sometimes going through people's stuff and just confiscating taking money gold so, so many ways in which people can transport wealth and um somebody mentioned in one of the posts that the cool thing was that they couldn't really take your crypto. You know, you can move it to a wallet and go through security, and it's it's a form of storing wealth that they can't access. You know? Yeah, you, you, they can't steal your brain. Put it right there, brain wallet. So 
how many users do you guys think Binance has that they just casually added 40 million from the country? Whoa. <laughs> no, not 40 million. 40,000. What, uh, what was it, 40,000? Okay. Yeah, no. 40 million would be probably like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I sorry, d- whatever. 40 million, guys? Come on. 40 million. Uh, okay, I thought this was insane. Like, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, dude, no. I, have no, uh, I don't have no idea how big no. Uganda is. Dude. I, I thought it was uh, weird. I'm going to say Uganda does not have more than 70 million people. I, I, Listen, can, I, I can't believe that I was reading that as 40 million. I'm so stupid. Don't listen to anything we way, say. Right? We are. I read it that way. Yes. Okay. Good. It's on. It's on the outline that way too. And I was just like, really? Oh, okay. Uh, population 34, well, 42 million. Fuck you over here is saying so, Binance so is a scam. So all the population has signed yeah. up. Every single baby has just everybody. signed up. Everybody in in Uganda except baby because they can't do cold wallets. So <laughs> they don't have their the fingerprints developed yet. But everybody over the age of five, here's your <laughs> personal Binance wallet. <laughs> uh, All right, somebody's got an alarm going off on their on their bikes. I don't know. No, it's Kareem. Kareem has, he's ha- he hasn't changed, changed the it. battery in that no, in like three years. One. Oh my God, you're such a liar. This is the third one I've changed. I don't it's know. My fire alarm. I, I guess, it has I guess a fresh a battery in subject. it. Yeah, well, because I'm annoyed that I've already changed two of these and then another one goes off. <laughs> put a new battery in it and it's still going off. Dickio, uh, he has. No, he it's has Fuckio. Been... No. Well, he was Fuckio, but then the, the mods changed him to Dickio. You're getting trolled so hard, Brent. Pay attention. Fuckio. It's just Dickio. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, do you guys think proof of work is going away anytime soon? Uh, no, not what? soon. No, no, not even, not even, not soon. Proof not of even semi soon. Yes, proof of work is here to stay for a while. There will okay. always be a, a community. There will always be a place for people who believe proof of work is the secure, old school way, um, and it's just going to become more energy efficient. It doesn't it's have also... to be. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. It's just. People don't realize that just because Bitcoin is a certain way doesn't mean all the proof of work will be that way. And I'll remind everybody that one of the reasons Bitcoin wastes, quote unquote, so much energy, because I don't want to say waste because security is being created, but it's also because everybody's competing for the same block. And we already have different parts of the space that are trying to find ways in which you could have proof of work miners competing for multiple blocks and DAG systems. So you don't have as much energy being wasted. There is... um, there is a place for proof of work as it becomes more energy efficient. And there's going to be, I think, a majority of proof of stake in the space. And a lot of hybrid combinations. Yeah. Of many different things. I, I think, I think we've got a, a trigger going on in the chat here. Somebody uh, mentioned proof of stake being insecure. Oh, it, it might be a rumble in the jungle. We might be able to watch this go down. Listen, here's the bottom line for anybody who's saying that proof stake is insecure. The only argument that I'm going to make is there's a good chance. I certainly don't know from a coding standpoint, whether or not proof of stake is secure because I don't have the background. Chances are most people listening don't either. But what I do know is a project like, for example, Cardano submitted in a peer review journal to experts on this, whether or not their system was provably secure as proof of stake. I believe it was Ouroboros, a provably secure proof of stake system. And a panel of computer scientists through a peer review process accepted it as a secure process. So unless you have really strong evidence to show why that peer review process was flawed, then I'm going to assume you're wrong. All right. And on that note, we don't like uh, rubbing cream the wrong way. What? I'm just giving a new. response. Oh, my God. I'm just giving facts. I agree. It was great. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta lay down the law. I I love this. Uh, Pro is yelling at y- yelling at uh, Fuckio, Dickio, Duckio, saying he's full of shit. And uh, anyway, it's fun. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this week's edition of the weekly roundup for the R cryptocurrency. Well, wait, 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 wait. We've just been handed in car- a medium article. I'm just kidding, guys. Let's call it a night. If you were paying attention, it's an inside joke. (laughs) My man. All right, guys. Don't get liquidated, Dickio. (laughs) Indeed. All right, guys. I was Mike. I was here with Brent and Kareem. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you. Have a nice one, guys.